Hi guys, it's Mai here. And today, in honor of Pride Month, I am doing a video on how to better love yourself as a transgender woman. I feel like this video is long overdue, and it's not necessarily going to be the golden rule or the golden rule book on how to love yourself, but it is the tips and tricks that I've learned over time in my own transition, and I'm just going to share my strategies and my tips with you guys. But before we begin, I just wanted to let you guys know about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. For myself, I recently did a course called Everyday Minimalism, Finding Calm and Creativity in Living Simply by Erin Boyle. And I absolutely loved this course because I have been looking for ways to better minimalize my life, declutter my bedroom, get rid of things I really just don't need and learn to let go. And most importantly, take control and agency over the things that I have power over and give myself that sense of empowerment, which I think is really important and also kind of ties into the theme of today's video as well. If you're uncertain about what's next, creative challenges and productivity classes can be a great way to help you structure your time and set up achievable goals. Drawing, writing, and journaling classes can be a great way to help manage stress, practice mindfulness, and feel connected to one another. Skillshare offers membership with meaning. Connect with the support of fellow creatives and enter a community of encouragement, communication, and inspiration. So whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. And this just in, Skillshare is giving away two months of premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box to help you explore your creativity. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So if you're interested, get started. So in today's video on how to love yourself as a transgender woman, I divided it into six main chapters. They're short but sweet and I wanted to keep things organized. So I'm going to start chapter one with you guys right now, which is nurturing your inner transition. So what I mean by this is maintaining your sense of self. Stay busy, keep your hobbies and interests, but allow them to transform with you as you go with the flow through your transition. Remember, you were still a person before you transitioned. That was still a part of who you are and the things that you did that brought you enjoyment will continue to bring you enjoyment. For me, that was uh, filmmaking, it was writing, it was making visual art. And in a lot of ways, I've brought that with me through my transition. I create YouTube videos for you guys. I still write poems and short stories and things. I am considering working on a screenplay and stuff. So for me, just taking those hobbies and those interests have made me continue my sense of self forward through my transition and not worry so much about my identity outside of my transition because the last thing you want to do is make your life all about being transgender because then at the end of the day when you feel like you've started to check off most of the boxes on your list of transition then you kind of lose that feeling of worth because what purpose do you have now you've kind of focused on this one thing for so long that now you don't have anything else to turn to so it's important to keep that sense of self and also to prevent yourself from dissociating. I found during points in my transition when I was too focused on how I looked and how I appeared on the outside, I found myself lacking the inner nurture and kind of dissociating and asking myself, who am I? Who is Maya Henry? You know, uh, am I even close to who I was before? So all of those things can kind of be brought into check by maintaining your sense of interest in hobbies and skills and the things that made you who you were even before transition. In society, there is a lot of emphasis placed on the physical transformation that transgender people go through. So we have such a important significance put onto our surgeries, onto our makeup, onto our hair, our physical transformation. And while that is all important in helping alleviate our dysphoria to a certain degree, most of that comes from our view of ourselves from the inside. That's why it's so important to nurture your inner transition. Another important thing you can do to nurture your inner transition is to keep track of your journey through 
writing, journaling, vlogging, photography, just keeping track of where you were at the beginning to where you've come to now is so, so important. It can help with your patience in your transition, especially writing your thoughts out can help you realize this is how I thought a year ago and this is how I think now. And you can really track the changes and really grow as a person and see the change. For me, that was obviously YouTube and I can go back and see my early videos and be like, oh my goodness, like, look how much more more shy I was and how much more confidence I have today. So being able to keep track of those changes is very important. Just remember that you are eternal and your exterior is what is ever changing. We are always transitioning through different phases of our lives. Everyone is from childhood to teenage years, to young adulthood, to being middle aged, to being an elder, your appearance is always going to change. So focusing on nurturing your inside and the person that you are who is eternal is so much more valuable at the end of the day. So just make sure that you are always keeping in tune with yourself and the things that make you happy. That could be going for bike rides. It could be having friends and making sure that you have that social interaction in life. It could be anything that helps you feel like you are growing on the inside. It could be traveling. It could be seeing different cultures and experiencing different ways of life. Always stay present and always believe in yourself. Now let's move on to the second chapter, accept the things you cannot change. So what I mean by this chapter is to be aware of the differences between you and cisgender people, but don't allow them to control your life. So for me, that was kind of accepting the idea that my chromosomes will never be XX, I will be infertile, and I also went through the wrong puberty the first time around. So acknowledging all of these things helps me to better stay in tune with myself and my transition and my journey and not always come compare myself to cisgender people. So for instance, I'll be on Instagram and I'll be scrolling through and I'll see someone who's really slender and thin and has big, beautiful hips. And I'm kind of like, damn, like I'm nothing compared to her femininity. But then I have to stop and check myself and say, wait a minute, I need to accept the journey that I've been through. I'm a warrior I'm a survivor, so are you. And I went through around seven years of male puberty. This person on Instagram, this cisgender woman, had to go through seven years of male puberty and then reclaim her femininity. Would she be in the same shoes that she's in in this photo? Probably not, you know? So it's, and that could be taken literally too, but it's just about learning to respect the journey that you've taken and the stuff that you've been through and learning to have self-compassion for that. A lot of transgender people have a list of things that they want to change about themselves physically. And that could range from a breast augmentation, which I've had. You could take hormone replacement therapy. And there are things that you can do to change your appearance and to alleviate your dysphoria. However, I feel like there is a fine line between body dysphoria, which is feeling dissociated from your gender, and body dysmorphia, which is just feeling dissociated from your body parts in general. And there's a fine line with that because the pressures that society places on women to be so beautiful and to be supermodels, when you're already spending all this money to try to better match your outside with your inside, you kind of feel this pressure to have the best transition, to look the most feminine, to be a supermodel. And the pressure is very, very real. Eating disorders are very, high among transgender women. So learning to accept your journey and your differences and allow that to empower you versus feeling like you have to completely fit into a mold is so much more of a self-love journey than just getting surgeries and hoping that it will solve all of your problems. Some transgender women regret some of the surgeries they've had, whether it's fillers, whether it's silicone butt injections or illegal back alley stuff. A lot of the things that go maybe even more overboard than what would be considered natural. And so just keeping in tune with what makes you happy. And ultimately, if that does make you happy, then go for it, do what you want, as long as it's safe and not like back alley surgery. At the end of the day, I feel like your contentment is not gonna come from changing your physical appearance to a certain degree, but more so changing the way you view yourself on the inside. Surgery can help alleviate dysphoria, but it does not cure it. The next chapter on learning to love yourself as a trans woman is surrounding yourself with positive and affirming people. 
At a certain point in your transition, you want to reduce contact with people who invalidate your identity, who see you for the person that you were before more so than the person you are in the present. It can be very damaging to your own view of yourself if you are around people who constantly call you by your old name, who see you as someone who was male growing up and they still see you that way now and they don't see the progress you've made and the changes you've made in life in general because there are going to be major changes. You might have new interests, you might approach the world from a different perspective now and if you are continuing to surround yourself with people who aren't willing to grow with you as a person then it often will set you back and I know we don't always have the opportunity if it's our family but just having patience with them and learning to grow with them and teach them in a way that isn't confrontational because for a lot of people this is something that's very new as well. But at the end of the day if someone is invalidating who you are as a person, then you should reduce contact with them. Another great group of people to surround yourself with through transition that will help you better understand and love yourself is LGBT people who are specifically trans positive or have trans experience. And the reason for that is because they can help you, they can relate to you. I personally went to gender support groups and I have a lot of trans connections online and it's a great community for that so you can find those resources online as well which is super awesome but being able to have people around you or who you can talk to that are going through the same situation can really help you from feeling alone at the end of the day the ultimate goal not just for trans people but for everyone is to surround yourself with people who will love you unconditionally be there for you listen be a shoulder to cry on when you are going through things and ultimately just understand you my closest friends are not transgender but they are so open-minded they are so caring and empathetic that talking to them gave me as much satisfaction as talking to a trans person would be and they were so accepting and understanding and helping me find my womanhood so without them, I don't think I would be where I am today. Sometimes you really need that positive affirmation from the people around you. You need to have your group mirror back the beauty of you, if that makes sense. The next chapter is called Don't Other Yourself. So what I mean by don't other yourself is that everyone has obstacles and struggles to overcome. And we are way more similar to other people, to cisgender people then we are different. Just know that you are not alone. The world is currently going through a societal shift in perception of gender, of trans people. Heck, even like 10 years ago, the term was just so unknown. I was barely just discovering it myself. And look at where we are now. There is actually rules and regulations in place to protect trans people in lots of parts of the world and we are striving for more change and more equality every single day just know that the things that make you different are greatly outnumbered by the things that make you alike with cisgender people not only can cisgender people be infertile but cisgender people also go through a lot of the same struggles financially uh, with family with a lot of common goals and career so all of these things all of these challenges are all similar. We all like good movies, sunny days, laughter, and good food. We all have different ways of enjoying life, but they all overlap. And that's the point I'm trying to make. If we other ourselves in society and we just solely focus on the differences and we obsess over that, then obviously we're not going to feel happy and we're not going to feel like we fit in. Sometimes I would be watching a TV show or a film in my transition and I would just completely zone out because I couldn't relate to the cisgender characters who just so easily fall in love. No one has to tell anyone that they're trans and face rejection because of that. They're meeting each other at face value and that was just such a struggle for me. But learning to kind of let go of that and accept that this is my life and this is what I have to do, I was able to kind of remove myself from those negative thoughts and just accept the fact that people's relationships don't work out anyway sometimes and most of the time it has nothing to do with them being transgender so being able to separate the trans experience from negativity is so important chapter number five is don't seek validation from a partner now this one is just important for anyone in general, but especially for transgender women. And the reason for that is because 
Oftentimes when we are doubting ourselves, when we are doubting our femininity, when society questions our identity as women, we turn to partners to validate that. And I am totally guilty of doing that. I feel like there is nothing in the world like having a partner who loves you back and sees you for the beautiful woman that you are. And honestly, it's great. And we should be finding partners that validate us in that way, that make us feel like better versions of ourselves. However, we shouldn't place our entire validation on a partner. We should already love ourselves and feel a sense of contentment before getting into a relationship. Otherwise, I find that your life can kind of surround that relationship. And when it's gone, you are left picking up the pieces of a life that relied on that person's boost of confidence. You need to have a life hobbies and friends outside of your relationship. It's so important to have that sense of self and to have that independence so that you are not in a relationship for the wrong reasons, so that you are not staying in an abusive relationship, so that you have the power to move freely through relationships when they are no longer meeting your needs. So having that independence is so important. I've always admired people and obviously it's a journey and breakups are going to be hard no matter what. But as long as you are not putting all your eggs in one basket and allowing one person to build you up and then break you down, you are going to be a much happier person at the end of the day and much more well-rounded. And you cannot allow them to be the reason that you feel like a woman. You need to find that in yourself. I know that before I transitioned, I always knew on the inside I was a girl, but as I transitioned and I encountered speed bumps, I began to question that unwavering certainty. I began to say, oh, well, I look so bad today. Like, I don't look feminine at all. I look very masculine. I, it's dysphoria talking, right? And so you have these negative thoughts in your head. And sometimes it can be hard to see yourself as a woman. That's dysphoria talking to you. And you might look great that day, but in your head, that little voice is nagging at you. But you have to work towards being kinder to yourself and just ignoring it you know like it's not true lots of cisgender women are masculine presenting as well there is honestly very little difference in the grand scheme of life between you and them and so learning to be comfortable in your womanhood and to own it is so important to do on your own so that if your relationship doesn't work out you are still standing on two feet proud tall and strong my last and final chapter in today's video is be kind to yourself. You are a fighter, a warrior, a survivor. Your resilience is your beauty. You have gone through something that most people in the world will never understand or never know. And you are all the more powerful and all the more knowledgeable for it. It is an experience that teaches you empathy, patience, and kindness. And ultimately, the person that you need to be kind to is yourself. Because if you can't love yourself, then how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? <laughs> to quote RuPaul. So sometimes when I'm not being kind to myself, I think these dark thoughts, as I said before, dysphoria is talking. I think, oh, like you'll never have a fulfilling life because you can't bear a child or, oh, your Adam's apple looks so prominent today or your hips are so narrow. I'll have all these negative things that I'm thinking about myself. And then I have to stop myself and say, hey, would I project this onto a friend? Would I say this to a friend or someone I love? And the answer is always no. Why would you say that to someone you love? So it's very clear that you are not loving yourself in that moment and you need to give yourself the same love that you would give someone else. So learning to catch yourself when you're going through those moments is so important and having that awareness. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll leave like sticky notes with affirming words, like you're beautiful, like own today, gorgeous, you know, like you can do cheesy little stuff like that, which is always a help. You can watch content that is going to inspire you and make you feel better. Make sure you're curating your social media to inspire you and uplift you and not to make you feel lesser than. I sometimes will even follow trans women and a lot of their posts are so heavily facetuned to the point where they have the perfect like goddess body and they're the 
embodiment and vision of femininity and I sometimes feel like I failed like how am I not this beautiful like why am I so far behind in my transition and these people just started and then you have to remember and say to yourself hey this is filters this is facetune these people could be going through the same stuff that I'm going through they're just doing a better job at hiding it sometimes so just know that what you see online isn't always real and most of the time it's not and it's just hiding a bigger insecurity and a bigger issue in our society a very important thing that us transgender women have to do in order to get over the hump and love ourselves is to acknowledge our internalized transphobia. I have been so bad at having this internalized discontent for being transgender. A lot of the times you'll see videos online saying, I hate being transgender and uh, this is just the worst. And you know, like people hating on themselves and being so unhappy. And the reason why we have this internalized transphobia, and we have to explore this, is because this is what society made us feel as we were growing up. So I was taught that being feminine was horrible because I was a boy. I was made fun of for it. And it was honestly a struggle. And it honestly drilled into my mind that this is a bad thing. And when you transition and you reach that point, unless you feel like a cisgender woman, then you can sometimes have those negative thoughts towards yourself. And it comes from a place of internalized transphobia. You are judging yourself based off of the way that everyone else judged you when you were growing up. And that's kind of the mind that's been molded. And we have to learn to break that and to deconstruct it and to really question why we feel that way and move forward in order to love ourselves. Some short-term fixes for being kind to yourself could be ordering your favorite meal, watching your favorite show, buying that outfit you've always been eyeing or that wig if you can't grow your hair long, just doing the things that can give you that short-term contentment because sometimes you just need that to get through the week. And that's no shame. And I feel like that's part of the joy of transitioning. You can finally express yourself and be yourself. It's not about being a supermodel. It's not about being gorgeous. It's about about being yourself and finally having that freedom to open the cage and to transform it into the person that you always knew you were on the inside. Have a self-care routine. Do a face mask, light a candle, brush your teeth, declutter your space, take control and agency over the things that you have power over and you will feel so much more empowered. We cannot change the world in a day, but we can do small steps in order to make ourselves happier. And just remember, your shell is not all of you. We are more than the sum of our parts. We are not objects floating through space. I think that we are eternal and spiritual beings and who we are is always on the inside and we show that through our actions. We are all resilient, beautiful people who have survived and we have fought to be where we are today. So just remember that. Stick up for yourself, you know? I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I had a quite a journey making it. It was very nice to have such an affirming, positive experience writing out all of these ideas and tips and tricks that I have. And honestly, some of them I just came up with now and I feel like they're already making me happier. So I hope you guys find some insight and some help in these and I hope you guys enjoy Pride Month. I will see you guys soon. Uh, don't be afraid to follow me on Instagram and comment, rate, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Also, shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much. I wouldn't be able to create content Content like I'm doing without you guys helping and supporting me. If you guys are interested, all the links are down below. And once again, the Skillshare link is also in my description box for two free months of premium membership. So go check that out and have a fabulous rest of your day. Bye guys.